The changes you have made required Raspberry Pi to be rebooted. Let's just do it. Oh, f I hit no, what? No. Now, I realized I might have royally screwed up here. Test your memory. You know, I've been wanting to play a memory game recently because I'm wondering how my memory's going. Oh shit, what? Hey guys, how are you all doing? Really? That's just great. You know, I'm doing pretty great today too because today is... Sorry about this calendar. March 14th! That's Pi Day. What better way to celebrate Pi Day than with... a box of raisins. Actually, it does kind of look like a raisin box, but no, we're talking about a Raspberry Pi. I have received countless requests to do this on the show, and I've never seen a Raspberry Pi in person, so I thought, you know what? You guys are great. Let's finally do it. But I didn't stop there. Yes, we have the Model B Plus version. Well, okay, this is version three, the Model B Plus. It's the B Plus form factor. But we also have a nifty little case that we can put it in. Of course, we can use it pretty much in anything because it's really small. But if we need to take it on the go or make it look pretty, we can do that. And just for the sake of consistency, I also bought the micro USB power supply to go with it. So, here's the game plan for today. We're gonna unbox everything and explore the hardware. Again, I've never used this stuff before. Then, potentially, in a follow-up episode, we'll do something a little more creative and advanced with the system after we have it set up today. So, let's pop this raspberry cherry. Oh, there's some things on the back. There's some ancient hieroglyphs. 64-bit quad-core, ARM CPU, and some wireless stuff. So, all right, let's try opening it again. It's, um... Okay, so earlier I swear I saw an open here label and I couldn't find it again. There it is in size minus one font. It does say open here, so. There, much easier when you follow the directions because then it just unfolds like that. Look at that little pretty thing in there. Let's have some fun. Out you come. All right, so here is the Raspberry Pi 3 B plus form factor. Pretty much the size of a credit card. Now, I realized I might have royally screwed up here because, oh, hang on a second. Son of a bitch. There is a micro SD card in here. I was afraid that I didn't get one. <laughs> I was like, oops, I feel like I forgot something. But then I look at the box and it's like, it has noobs on it, so it must have an SD card. Yes, it has a micro SD card and a full size SD card adapter with the awesome Raspberry Pi logo on it. So we are safe and you can fall over, I don't care. We have micro USB there for the power supply. HDMI for a monitor. I'm guessing that's 8th inch mini for sound. Oh, it kind of looks like that. If you look out on your left, you'll see four historic USB ports preserved in all their beauty and ethernet. And right here, a nice little touch, the Raspberry Pi logo is on there. There's our Broadcom chip. That's the board itself. Where does the micro SD go? I wonder. <laughs> there it is. Right on the bottom. There's where the micro SD card goes. Figured that out pretty quick. And another Pi logo. We're upside down right now, so it kind of looks like a vine of grapes with weird shoes. And don't throw it in the bin. People will be mad at you. We have the universal power supply with all of the fun electrical receptacle faces around the world and micro USB. Micro USB B, well, let's bust it open. Oh, everything is so white. So here's the power brick with the logo on it. I thought it looked pretty cool, so I wanted to get one of these just for brand sake. Of course, I mean, I already have a micro USB cable, but I wanted something prettier and on point with the brand. And if for some reason I ever get out of this layer, I can travel the world and plug in my Pi into a plethora of different outlet receptacles around the globe. Actually, I might need one of those because I just realized the one that is pre-installed is not going to work here in North America. <laughs> so we're going to have to change that. Let's see where... There we go. That's our North American power supply. Let's swap that out. Not power supply, I mean plug. There we go. Satisfying. We're good to go. All right, we need, we need a monitor, we need a keyboard, a mouse, but I can take care of that. And then later, like I showed, we'll get it in the little pie case. I like the little color scheme going on here, the red and the white. Pretty. Makes me want a milkshake or something, you know? It's all fruity looking. <coughs> oh boy. 
And boom, just like that, we have a monitor. So right here, we'll set the Pi up with HDMI coming out of here and USB out the front for other peripherals. And take a look at this. We have some conversion technology to run this monitor because it's DVI, but the Pi has HDMI, so we're gonna get it all dongled up. There we are, conversion technology installed, Captain. Micro USB power supply is next. That sneeze hurt, by the way. That really freaking hurt. I'm a, like a very powerful sneezer. Okay, I knotted this one up big time. I don't know how the frick I managed to do that. Power is plugged in. And there we have power on the Pi now, little red light. All right, so we have power and video. Now we need keyboard and mouse. Oh, f***ing A. So we have that light on, I'm guessing it just turns on automatically but there's no medium in there to boot off of. So that'll be next. In retrospect, I probably should have put the medium in first. Probably would have been a smart thing to do. But no, oh, there goes the cord. I'm gonna have to go get that, just full of inconveniences. Get the micro in there. There we go. Monitor's on, thingamajig is in there. I need power again. I'm guessing, I'm guessing this thing just turns on by itself, maybe. Oh, we got a green light. So we have video for recovery mode, hold shift. So we're getting somewhere, it's doing it. We have four raspberries. Name the price of these four raspberries and they can be yours. Hey, bon appetit. We have the road to nowhere right here. We have a panel. So we have a menu, programming, office, internet. And it looks like that is our web browser there. File system browser, file manager, some sort of terminal. Ooh, Mathematica's on here. Oh yeah, Wolf from Mathematica for Raspberry Pi. It's included. I had no freaking idea. Kind of makes sense though, because these Pis are used a lot for programming. No internet connection. Performance-wise though, I mean, there's a little bit of tearing, but we may not have a driver for that. But it's smooth. But then again, this looks like a very lightweight operating system right now. So <laughs> we have that going for us. Raspberry Pi configuration to what? Wait, set Wi-Fi country on... Localization tab of Raspberry Pi configuration to enable Wi-Fi. Oh, all right, well. Oh, Minecraft Pi is pre-installed. Well, son of a bitch. So that was pretty automatic. I mean, I guess it's nice they make it easy, but damn, I felt like I haven't done anything. <laughs> when I saw noobs on the package, I was like, oh, that that's the thing that already installs the operating system. So I'm guessing, yeah, this is running Raspbian and noobs is like the simple way to install that, but this was already pre-configured because it came with an SD card. Well, I guess since we're already up and running, let's configure shit. We need to get this on the internet, the, the internet first. That would be nice. United States. And okay. The changes you have made required Raspberry Pi to be rebooted. Let's just do, oh, f I hit no, what? No, asshole. Why did I click no? I wanted to hit yes. I am out of my mind. Wi-Fi country, yep, okay. All right, I guess we'll just reboot manually. No big deal, reboot. Colors, that's probably some sort of diagnostic screen if I had to guess. Raspberry. Four raspberries, uh, uh, uh. Oh, I can't do my impressions today. I am really lacking my <sighs> normal energy. Hmm. Maybe I'm allergic to raspberries. Scanning. Hey, check it out. We have a number five there, I don't know why. Hit okay. Oh, it's doing stuff. We have animation. That usually means something is happening. It's blue. It's got a green check mark. That's usually a good sign. Let's go to the internet. We have Claws Mail, the Magpie. Oh, magazine, all right. VNC Viewer Suite and Chromium for the web browser. Well, let's see if this works. If it does, great, because that was way easier than trying to get the internet to work on Solus. That was a bitch. This was just like, click, click, reboot, done. It just worked. So quickly, let's just go to, no thanks, bitch. Excuse me. Thecomputerclan.com. Bon appetit. The Wi-Fi worked on the first gosh darn try. Was that so hard? <laughs> oh, that's a little out of date. Uh, so yeah, um, that was easy. That was way easier than trying to get it to work on Solus. Holy crap. Hey, there's me right there. This is a kind of meta experience. Pretty sweet. 
The internet is up and running. Let's take a look at, oh my gosh, dude, I'm not a programmer, so I don't even know if I can touch this section of the menu because I really don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Maybe some other time. Let's just take a look at some uh, settings quick. Let's configure this. Picture, road.jpg. Okay, what other things do we got? Well, it's a list, so I don't actually get previews of what the pictures are, but uh, we can guess. A mountain probably has a mountain in it. That was a pretty good deduction. Oh, we could show documents. We can show the wastebasket. Mounted discs. Cliff. A Fjord. Not a Chevy, but a, that was a dad joke, wasn't it? I'm sorry. There's some trees there, not too shabby. Let's get our own photograph on here, which I'm actually going to get from the Computer Clan wallpaper gallery with photos that Brainiac Brent and I have shot. Pretty cool stuff. You can actually download them too if you want. I'm gonna go to the website, hit more. Wallpapers. Let's see, what will look good? Some grass, let's do the grass. Go to our downloads folder, move that into pictures. I'm guessing we can just like right click maybe? Nope, probably not. Okay, so let's go. Desktop preferences, picture. Can we just drag this in here? Look at that, freaking love it. Menu bar, let's see. Color, let's make that maybe one of our computer clan accent colors. Let's do, not necessarily accent colors, but just one of our brand colors. It would be 4860AC. Boom, there we go. And then we'll need to make this white so it doesn't look like crap. There we go. That actually looks pretty shitty. <laughs> that Those colors do not work well with the background I put on here. That just looks like shit. Uh, maybe we'll just go black. Once you go black, man. Yeah, that looks f***ing awesome. Let's just go black. You know, actually, hang on. We have a dark shade of gray in our brand board. Let's just do like a really, really dark gray. Yeah, that's it right there. Neutrals, man. All right, guys, that is that. So one request, well, there's quite a few things I could do in the follow-up episode to this later. But for now, since Minecraft Pi Edition is already on here, fun with blocks, let's see how well this runs on this credit card size computer. I have not booted up Minecraft in forever. Oh, Pi Edition 1.1 Alpha, that gives me confidence. Oh, you don't even need to log in. It's just its own thing. Well, that's great. Let's have it randomly build the terrain and see how this goes. I feel super good about this. <laughs> Shit, we're actually getting a decent frame rate. That is pretty awesome. Oh my gosh, I haven't played this game in like a thousand years. Shit. I don't even really remember how to do anything. Oh, hang on, we got something. E, okay. Here's a question, can we output sound? Oh, probably not through this monitor because there's no speakers or HDMI. We are converting to DVI. So we don't have any speakers hooked up right now, so we'll just have to add in the sound effects. That was a bad idea. I got to dig my way out now. Yep, it is in creative mode. That explains why we had a infinite inventory. But yeah, even in full screen mode, check this out. Full, like virtually full resolution of this entire monitor on this tiny little credit card, Raspberry Pi, tiny computer. Like frame rate's pretty darn good. That's gotta be like 60. That's gotta be like a perfect 60. My cursor is moving inside of here. But when I get to here, it goes away. It just kind of gives me my normal system cursor. The game cursor just kind of sticks right there. Well, that's, uh, that makes everything very difficult. It's probably because I maximized the window. Oh, this will be fun. Let's just have some fun with some dynamite. Or TNT, more specifically. What, you're not gonna light up? Thought this shit lit up dynamite. Maybe it's not programmed to explode. So now that we have a basic configuration going here, let's shut this boy down and get it in the case to make it look pretty and keep it protected. So we're gonna shut down for now. Bye bye. And let's put it in a case. Shunk. Here we go. Let's take this apart. There, there are instructions that came with it. You know, there's probably instructions that came with all this stuff. I don't know, I'm just not a fan of reading them. I'm a fan of screwing up and figuring it out by myself. That's probably not a 
good lesson, but not every lesson you learn is a good one. Boy, there's a lot of languages in there. Let's look at this one. Dismantle. It looks like it's just all snap, and then you put the feet in there. Which sounds like they're already in the case. So, let's just uh, take it apart. There we go. Just like Legos. Just like some simple Legos. You could easily make a Lego case for this computer. I'm sure a billion people already have. There we go. And then there's the little rubber feet. Let's get that in there. Put this back end in first with the card and then just push it down like that. Perfecto. Little holes for the lights. Yep, there's a power light like we saw earlier and a little yellow light for when the card is being accessed. Put the top piece on. I don't know, that looks pretty cool just by itself right there, but let's get some white on there because white is cool. Line it up with the ports. Oop, I was trying to show you and I totally screwed that up. Snap it on the side there. Piece of cake. Pretty simple. And then... It's cool that they got the logo on the inside. So if you just use it like this, you can still see the logo, but they also have the logo on top here. And you just... Fit that bad boy on and there you go. You have a pocket-sized ARM computer. Right now with Raspbian on it. I'm sure we can put other operating systems on there too, but you know this is going to be the out-of-the-box optimized solution, I would imagine, but rubber time. Let's get the feet taken off. Just kind of peeling them out of the plastic there and just very delicately... Insert them like that. They're like those old little candies. I forgot what they're called, but you know, those little little candies you peeled off the paper and ate them. I'm blanking on the name of them. They're probably called different things in different parts of the world. And there we go. That is really freaking lightweight. We have our ports, USB and Ethernet, then HDMI, power, sound. Oh, hang on. We got a little camera icon here. This might have some sort of video capability as well. Hmm. Yeah, that looks like a camera icon. I should probably look into that. Then our convenient slot for our card and our power and activity light. It's pie day, pie day, gotta get down on pie day. I just reignited all of your Rebecca Black nightmares, didn't I? Good times, oh, let's see. She wore a raspberry beret. Now that's gonna be stuck in your head too. There's too many songs that work with the raspberry pie. Well, enjoy those being stuck in your head. I mean, they're stuck in my head too. It's a lose-lose. Let's plug everything back in. So we have USB. That's in there, HDMI, and then power fell to the floor again because power is a lazy, slothful pile of shit. Sleeping on the job again, A eh, micro USB? Wow, this cord is like really springy. Well, we have ways of making you less springy. Say hello to my friend, gaffer tape. Just gonna tape you in place and you ain't gonna budge. There you go. That'll teach you. All right, let's power it back on. There's our little lights on there. All right, we're back in action. Let's take a look. Programming, Node Red, clever name, Sonic Pi, Scratch 2. I remember Scratch. I never used it, but I vaguely remember a fan way back, way back in like maybe, I don't know, the super early days of the Computer Clan, probably 09. They made a goofy like Computer Clan Scratch game. I remember seeing these all over the internet. I say back in the day, it was really only like 10 years ago. But in terms of the World Wide Web's like relative life, that was a long time ago. So I'll tell you what, I definitely don't know much about programming or how to make stuff in Python, but the lovely devs have already put some Python stuff on here. Python games, let's have a look. Ooh, Flippy is like reversey. Steve Ballmer would be proud. Ooh, okay, a Tetris-like game. That we can do. Tetramino, press A key. All right. Oh no, wait, that I just made it go down faster. Oh, that's how you make it go down faster. Okay, let's let's um, abort that. Now that I know the actual buttons to press, <laughs> let's do it for realsies. But see, if I suck at something, I, I at least admit it. I, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> no, you asshole. A snake-like game? This I can do. Wormy. It must have eaten Wormy. How many SpongeBob references are we gonna get in this episode today? Oh my gosh. 
They must have hidden wormy. Holy shit, that's fast. Yeah, okay. That, I'm, oh. Wow. No, I don't remember it being like this fast out of the gate, but uh, let's have some fun. Let's see how far we can get. That was horrible. Well, this is kind of like, oh. Remember I was talking about nuggets earlier on the iMac G3 episode? Yeah. This is kind of like that, but, you know, way harder. <laughs> I mean, clearly nuggets was based on snake to begin with. Eat the smaller squirrels. Oh, that doesn't sound nice. Test your memory. You know, I've been wanting to play a memory game recently because I'm wondering how my memory's going. Oh, shit. What? Okay, um, I saw that. Good heavens. Let's do it for real. All right, this was nearby. There we go. This green one. Oh, I don't remember seeing that. Okay, this red one. Oh, no, that's pink, not red. Shoot. Well, we got two. Oh, that was just lucky. That was just lucky right there. <laughs> cool. Fun for the whole family. All right, guys, so here's the deal. We're just getting started. We now have this pie. What do we do with it? I've received some awesome suggestions from my patrons because I let them see my future plans coming up in advance. So they were able to give me some input. But now that this is public, I want your input. What are some other projects I could possibly test out with this Pi? A Plex server is something I've received as a suggestion. Game emulation, maybe some retro game emulation like what I used to do with MAME. I would love to do that kind of stuff on this Pi. That would be fun. But the thing that really stands out to me is a lot of people do vintage operating system emulation. So personally, I think my next project with the Raspberry Pi will be emulating the Commodore Amiga. That would be fun. But again, I want your suggestions too. So more to come with the Pi. Thanks for sticking with me. Catch the crazy and pass it on.